later I gonna upload the video in the YouTube okay so uh, I will share my uh, uh, screen so now uh, Google uh, don't have the uh, recording function eh? previously we, previously we, uh, I can record uh, the lecture session through the Google Meet uh, but now I need to use uh, other software to record the session. Maybe I will use the uh, OBS eh, to record. Okay, so I will share my screen. Wait. Eh. Okay. So everybody can see my screen. You can hear my voice. Anybody can respond? Yes, okay, thank you for the response. Yes, okay, okay. Yeah. So from time to time, uh, I will ask you whether you are still there or not. Okay, because uh, if I open this screen, I cannot see you. Okay. Uh, so uh, previously, it's happened uh, previously that I I lost the connections for about 20 minutes. And I'm talking to myself for 20 minutes. Uh, so suddenly, uh, uh, luckily, I, I managed to go back to the class and uh, explaining again. So, so from time to time, I will uh, uh, ask you whether you are still there, you are following me or not. Okay. So first of all, uh, maybe we can uh, start with the author system. Okay. I believe uh, you already in the author system. So if you are not in the author system, so no problem. I will update uh, the list of students later. Okay. So. Uh, if you see from here, I already put all the course info, okay, synopsis of the course, uh, WhatsApp link, okay, so we will use a WhatsApp uh, link, Google, uh, sorry, Google, so WhatsApp group, eh, WhatsApp group for both section 1 and section 2, okay. So if you see your friends uh, still not in the group, so please uh, invite your friend uh, using the uh, given link, okay. And I already create a playlist, a YouTube playlist where I will upload the uh, recording session later. Okay, section 1 and section 2. So if you see from my um, YouTube channel, you can also see the previous semester's uh, lecture videos. Okay, I, I also upload uh, all the videos uh, from the previous semester's. Okay. And then regarding the test dates, okay, so I have uh, prepared, I have planned the, the dates like this. Eh? So uh, we, we're going to have uh, one test and one quiz. Okay, one test and one quiz. So test going to be around 20%, uh, quiz going to be uh, objectives 10%. Uh, okay, so this is uh, my plan is to do on Thursday. So test is on 13th of May quiz gonna be on 16th of June so we're gonna do uh, in the morning okay sorry this is supposed to be one hour only eh? and uh, test uh, one and a half hour okay so if you found uh, if you find that these uh, dates uh, clash with other assessment from other subjects uh, please uh, inform me earlier so that we can uh, maybe we can decide another date uh, suitable for all of you Okay, tidak ada masalah kalau uh, tarikh ini clash eh, so you can uh, we can uh, suggest another date. Okay, and I also put the uh, lesson plan here RPP in the in this uh, uh, author, so you can uh, please see the RPP or the lesson plan so that you understand uh, the, the the structure of the uh, course uh, of this course eh, ECS. Okay. So, and then uh, learning materials, if you see from here, uh, I already put all the lecture notes from chapter 1 until chapter 5. Uh, I will also put the uh, uh, project instructions here later. Okay, I can add project instruction this in here. So, we're going to do a problem-based learning project. There are going to be two tasks okay, for the project. Okay. So I will put the, the task uh, in these documents, uh, PBL assignment 1 and also assignment 2. Okay, And then uh, I also put the uh, uh, PDF books. 
Okay, if you see here, HTTP Bitly ECS books. Uh, from the previous uh, experience, uh, students uh, inform me that uh, sometimes they are unable to access the links. Uh, so what we notice that if the students use the uh, Google student account, they might have a problem to access the link. Okay, uh, I'm not sure. So if you open here, <coughs> okay. So if you open here, you're going to see uh, I already provided a PDF uh, books. Eh? So if you are unable to open this link, I suggest you to open using your personal Google account. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure, eh? because uh, the previous student said that uh, if they used uh, a student account, they might have, uh, they, they, don't, uh, they cannot access uh, the, the, the link, the given link. So if you have that problem, uh, maybe you can try using your own uh, personal Google account. Uh, try to open the links. So hopefully you can see the links here, right here. Okay. So we're gonna use uh, most of the notes are based on these uh, books, eh? uh, electronic communication systems. Uh, you need to download it. This is a quite big. Uh, the the size is quite big. So this is a Wine Thomas's book. So this is our. Uh, ref the main reference book for ECS okay and if you go for the past year questions you see that I already put all the questions uh, previous semester's questions in the given uh, links okay for example final exam uh, you can see a lot of uh, exam questions in the given folder so this is all this is only the the questions eh? there's no answer Okay, so tidak ada jawapan. So you need to do the answer on your own. Okay, so uh, if you want to ask me question regarding the final exam, so I prefer you to do the question first. Then you can cross check with with me. Okay, uh, or uh, another suggestion is that you can uh, do the questions with your friends. Okay, you can collaborate with your friends. For example, uh, you do question number one, your friend do question number two, another friend question number three, and so on. So with that uh, strategy, you can uh, you can come up with the uh, answers bank. Okay, so I provide the question bank, so you can provide the answers bank. So I believe uh, you can also ask your seniors. I think maybe they have uh, some. Uh, solutions to the questions and uh, maybe you can get from your seniors as well so from my uh, advice you can uh, share with your friends okay share with your friends uh, for example you answer question number one and then you share in the uh, in the whatsapp group okay share in the whatsapp group uh, you already answered uh, question number one uh, previous semester so another students will do another questions and then share in the uh, google uh, group eh? sorry uh, in the whatsapp group so from there you can you can collect uh, many many answers or solutions from uh, for the previous semester's questions okay so in uh, that this is uh, uh, the easiest or the quickest way to to answer most of the given question in the question banks Okay, because there are too many questions here. I believe you will not be able to do it on yourself, okay, by yourself. But you need to uh, collaborate with your friends uh, so that you can answer, try to answer most of the questions uh, in the question banks. Okay, and then uh, so there's uh, you can try this one. Okay, and then uh, students list or I already put a. Uh, section 1 and section 2 uh, there's no individual activities but there's uh, there is a, a group activity for the first activity you need to find group members okay from now on you can find the group members so I I see that uh, some students already found the, the group members okay you can put your name in the group members and then uh, you need to uh, contact your friends and then uh, discuss uh, about the next given task for the project okay 
pastikan kamu uh, sudah ada group eh please make sure you already have a group by this week because by next week i will give the project instruction to you you can start do the uh, the project by next week okay so this is the first task find the group members as soon as possible and please make sure that you contact your group members eh? uh, sometimes uh, there, there is a there was a problem in the previous semester that uh, there's a group that they don't recognize uh, a new member in the group okay dia tak kenal tiba-tiba ada satu orang eh pelajar yang tiba-tiba masuk dalam group eh suddenly there's a student uh, put the name inside the group so the other group member don't know about about that students uh, so there's going to be a big problem later okay please make sure you contact all the group members and do the group meetings okay uh, assessment we will do assessment uh, through online because we we have a uh, 64 students eh? total 64 students if i want to do the face to face assessment there's going to be problem for now uh, because there's no uh, instruction from the uh, academic management office whether we are allowed to do the exams face-to-face uh, -face or not okay so for now we assume that uh, the test quiz and final exam we assume that it will be conducted uh, through online okay buat masa ni kita anggap dia akan dilaksanakan secara online okay I'm not sure whether uh, at the end of the semester whether the academic management office allowed face-to-face -face final exam that will be better so if if the university allowed that face-to-face -face final exam I will inform you as soon as possible so that you can come back to the campus okay for the exam okay and then what so this is about the author so maybe we can go to the lesson plan okay lesson plan uh, so this is the lesson plan that i have put in the uh, author system okay so you can read uh, the synopsis uh, the, this course is introduce introduce the fundamentals in analog and digital communication system so you see that the keyword here that you will learn about analog and you will learn about digital system okay comprises of analysis of signals and noise generation of analog and digital modulation schemes uh, transmission lines and wave propagation as part of a communication system finally the topic discussed the relate with the current applications in communication systems so actually there are two lecturers okay actually there are two 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 lecturers another one is uh, mr ezri okay so mr ezri is currently on a, a long holiday okay because uh, of because of certain issues that he need to take a long holiday uh, maybe he will uh, be he will be back uh, uh, on the second part of the semester okay so i i i think he will be back on the second semester uh, on the second part of semester okay second half of the semester okay so section one is actually uh, will be teach by mr ezri uh, for me, I will teach uh, section 2 actually. Okay, so for now, I will take both section for now until uh, Mr. Ezri return to the campus. Okay, so year 3, uh, 3 credit. Uh, so this is the uh, course learning outcomes. So what is the expected uh, outcome that we hope the students will be able to do at the end of the uh, semester? okay you will be unable to analyze various types of analog and digital modulation techniques and suitable method for the electronic transmission systems you will be able to practice professionalism in work related to electronic communication system you will be able to construct a report and do presentation in work related to the ecs okay and if you want to know uh, whether this subject is difficult or not okay so normally you will ask your seniors you ask your seniors or your friends uh, is this subject difficult or not okay uh, so maybe they will say that this is difficult some will say this is uh, not difficult some say that this is easy okay so that one is based on the perception based on the experience but if you want to know 
how can we uh, how can we know whether this subject is difficult or not based on the lesson plan or based on the syllabus document uh, so you need to see the cognitive level okay the taxonomy level over here okay on the right side okay c for cognitive a for effective a for effective so there are two different levels of effective and here is a cognitive cognitive is usually we assess you through the uh, test quiz and final exam okay the maximum level is level six okay level four is analysis so if you ask me uh, on paper this is actually level four okay intermediate level so actually this subject is intermediate level tidak susah it's not difficult okay so whoever told you that this subject is difficult uh, they are liars eh they menipu eh <laughs> okay so sebenarnya subjek ini tidak susah dia berada pada intermediate levels okay and uh, here we going to have you see that the assessment for CLO1 we will assess you through test quiz project report final exam uh, CLO2 learning outcome 2 we will assess you through project report and presentations CLO3 uh, course learning outcome 3 we will assess you through project report and video presentation okay so if you ask me uh, previously about the effective this effective we will assess you through the project okay C cognitive will be assessed through the exams okay so this is a KPI of this subject and this is also a KPI for me that means I must make sure that at least 50% of all of you achieve C plus and above minimum okay so this is my target okay hopefully actually I want all of you to get A okay I actually want all of you to get uh, A grade A for this subject so no problem okay tidak ada masalah untuk mendapat grade A jadi okay, saya secara pribadi personally I want all of you to get A A or A plus no problem okay don't worry okay so this is a transferable skills what is the transferable skill that we hope you can get you can uh, you can uh, you can get at the end of the semesters okay and these are the uh, distribution of uh, student learning time okay so if you see from here we have five chapters which have been distributed uh, across 14 weeks of uh, lecture okay so uh, section one uh, sorry uh, chapter one introduction okay introduction to communication systems uh, so actually we do a full online mode okay we do full online mode uh, three hours teaching and what is this this is actually three hours uh, uh, for independent study after you have a uh, uh, this is actually uh, what we call uh, estimations uh, how many hours you need to to understand the the topic that ha that have been discussed uh, today okay this week first week okay second week also chapter one third week gonna be noise okay if you see that uh, all the lecture sessions until week nine or until week ten is to be conducted on fully online okay so since um, I don't want to burden uh, some of the students, okay, because uh, some of you might not be here or maybe you have another problems, so we will do the uh, lecture sessions in full online for the first 10 weeks, okay, and hopefully for the last uh, four weeks, we're going to do the face-to-face, -face, okay, because actually we have the... Uh, uh, Idul Fitri a uh, holiday in the middle of the semester okay and also there's a uh, COVID issues there's also uh, housing issues for some students so I will give you more time to settle all your problems and hopefully we can meet again face to face uh, on week 10 or week 11 until week 14 okay so Chapter 2, noise, you will learn about the noise in the system, 
okay, whether it is in the system, a transmitter or receiver or inside the medium or channel. Then we, you will learn about analog modulation. So chapter 3 is analog modulation. Remember chapter 3 is the, uh, the biggest chapter in ECS in this subject. Okay, most of the time uh, are focused on chapter 3 actually. Eh? This is the, the biggest chapter, chapter 3. Chapter 3 will be divided into two parts. Eh? Uh, uh, amplitude modulations and also angle modulation for FM and PM phase modulation. Okay. Until uh, week 7 again uh, analog modulations. Okay. So your uh, your test will be until analog modulation chapter, okay? Uh, until uh, uh, power calculation in the uh, amplitude modulation, okay? This one I will explain uh, more details later about uh, the topics that gonna be that will be asked during the test, okay? Jangan bimbang. Uh, I will give you some uh, hints uh, later about the test. Okay. Uh, again, week eight also uh, still analog modulation, but this is all already part part two of the chapter three, and then uh, we go to the chapter four digital modulation. Okay, digital modulation and transmission. So you will learn about uh sorry, chapter three you will learn about. Amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, uh, phase modulation. You will also learn about the uh, the the the, uh, the circuitry of the modulation uh, circuit and demodulation circuit in the receiver. Okay. Then in the chapter four, you will learn about digital modulations. So this is for the digital system. In chapter three, you learn about analog system. So that's a different, okay? Ada perbezaan, okay? So chapter four, you will learn about digital modulation techniques, and also digital demodulation techniques, uh, and then you will learn about uh, encoding and decoding system, okay? Uh, you will learn about sampling process, quantization process, uh, and encoding process in the digital system. Then you will learn about digital radio. Okay, digital radio, you will learn about amplitude shifting, frequency shifting, and also uh, phase shifting, and also the quadrature amplitude modulation. Some of these going to be uh, asked in the... Okay, some of the topics here will be... Uh, will be... You will do it in the laboratory later. Okay, in the laboratory session in, the, in another subject. Okay, in others, in in the laboratory subject, uh, it will th there's a uh, experiment about this eh? amplitude shifting, frequency shifting, phase shifting, and also the quam. Okay, so uh, uh, topic topic ini akan di akan di uh, dibuat dalam subject makmal juga eh? another subject. Okay, and then starting from week twelve, you will learn about transmission line. Antenna and propagations. Okay, so so this one is actually consists of three main topics. Okay, three top uh, three big topics: eh? uh, transmission line, antenna, and wave propagation. So for your information, these topics is actually uh, from three different subjects. Okay, topic ini sebenarnya dari uh, chapter five ini. Uh, come from the three different subjects. So we have uh, here transmission line. This is related to the uh, electronic uh, electromagnetic compatibility subject. We ha also have antenna subject, and we also have <coughs> a subject related to the wave propagation. Uh, for example, like wireless communication and mobile wireless and mobile communication. Nah. so ada tiga subject. Eh? So here ini this is related to the electromagnetic compatibility subject we also have antenna subject and this is related to the wireless uh, communication subject okay so for this chapter it is uh, uh, summarized and compressed into one chapter only okay
so if you see here uh, the, the the topics for the ECS uh, consists of wide ranging of uh, uh, topics in the communication system so there uh, there are actually uh, many fundamentals uh, topics that you will learn in ECS okay so this subject if you ask me this subject is more about uh, reading and understanding the theoretical concept uh, and then about the calculation the calculation is not it's not difficult the calculation is not difficult uh, the difficulty is to 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 uh, to understand the theoretical concept okay that's the the challenge in ECS okay subject ECS tidak tidak susah eh? uh, the punya mathematics uh, the mathematics uh, uh, topics is easy it's not a uh, uh, mat engineering mathematics uh, uh, questions eh? the question is uh, the mathematical concept is uh, straightforward and easy to understand okay the the issue is to understand the theoretical concept okay so subject in is sebenarnya uh, requires you to to uh, to read a lot to understand a lot of concept okay so this is the distribution of marks okay so we're gonna have test uh, 20% uh, I estimate on week seven so we, sorry this is supposed to i will change this one so if uh, based on my uh, suggestion this is uh, i think week uh, after the mid sem break eh? after the mid sem break uh, mid sem break is uh, week seven is uh, mid sem break and then uh, you're gonna start again on the 8th of may okay 8th of may sorry So this is mid sem break, 8th of May. So the week after the mid sem break, eh, so 13th of May. Okay, so this is supposed to be, uh, uh, yeah, this is supposed to be uh, week 7, eh, week 7. Because now it's 20, wait, eh, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So week 6, uh, week 7 is your holiday and then uh, so this is the week 7 for the ac academic calendar okay so betul lah 13 May eh 13 of May and then quiz uh, 10% uh, I estimate uh, around uh, week 12 so quiz gonna be uh, objective in the author okay and then PBL PBL project we have uh, two tasks and each task gonna have a, a report and also the recorded video presentation so you need to you just need to record the video presentation you it's not a face-to-face -face, uh, presentations eh, or synchronous uh, presentation you just need to record the video okay so they're gonna be two reports and two video uh, recorded video presentations okay and then final exam of course final exam around 50 percent okay final exam is 50 percent so total uh, SLT student learning time is 120 hours and you're gonna need a MATLAB for the uh, project okay Sec uh, task number two you're gonna need to, to do to use a MATLAB so you can download the MATLAB from the website using your student ID uh, so for your information uh, UTHM subscribe to MATLAB okay subscribe uh, UTHM already subscribed to MATLAB so you just need to go to the Math, uh, MathWorks uh, website download uh, the, the software using uh, what they call a university wide uh, license eh, university license so from there it will detect that you are uni uh, UTHM students and you are allowed to use the MATLAB you can try it yourself okay boleh try eh? boleh cuba download okay so there are uh, references uh, here so if you see this is uh, quite old references but we still use it until now okay uh, most of the time we're going to use uh, this one at uh, the first one uh, electronic communication system fundamental through advanced so i already give this book uh, in pdf but that one is the first edition if you want to get the fifth edition you need to find it in the library Okay, ada dalam 
ada pada ada dalam library. Okay, the book is uh, wait eh. Okay, so so this is the the book eh for fifth edition. Semua boleh nampak eh? Can you see this book? Anybody can respond? Yes. Okay, okay. okay. So this is yes, the Wayne Thomas' fifth edition. Uh, the book that I gave you in the Google folder, that one is the first edition. Okay. So if you, if you, even if you buy this book, it's around uh, 60 to 70 ringgit, something like that. Eh? Uh, and if you ask, if you, from my op personal opinion, uh, even if you buy this book, you can use it uh, until uh, for, until until you die eh? for forever eh? maksudnya saya even for me i still read this book eh? uh, this contains uh, the principal concept until the advanced level okay so this is a good book you can get it from the library another book is uh, uh, which one eh? Oh, Zima. Okay, another book is uh, from Frenzel. Frenzel already uh, I put it in the Google Drive. So apart from Wayne Tomasi, there's uh, also a book by Frenzel. Eh? Frenzel I put it in the uh, Google Drive. Okay. So this is the references, and then uh, okay, if you uh, if you have the PDF version of uh, fifth edition, uh, please share to uh, with me. Eh? Okay. Until now, until now, I cannot find the PDF version for fifth edition. So, but if you have, uh, uh, maybe you can share with me. Okay. And this is the course attendance uh, and the regulations. Uh, you see that students must attend not less than eighty percent. Eighty percent means that for three hours uh, lecture, that means you must you you cannot absent more than three times. Okay, you cannot absent more than three weeks without any reasons. Okay, tidak boleh tidak hadir ke kuliah tanpa sebab sebanyak uh, tiga kali uh, lebih daripada tiga kali. Okay, so twenty percent is three times for or nine hours, three, six, nine, three times. So you cannot absent more than three times. Uh, maximum is three times. Okay. But if you have uh, problems, if you cannot attend the class, please inform me. Uh, you can, if you are sick, you can uh, send to me your a copy of your uh, doctor prescriptions, sorry, doctor uh, letter, MC, eh? or that one is if you are sick. Uh, if you are, if you have uh, other uh, university activities, for example, you can send a copy of the. Uh, letter from the university or for example for example if let's say you didn't come to the class because uh, maybe suddenly you are sleeping for example okay uh, in that case uh, you need to write a letter you sign the letter your PAK eh, your, your PAK also need to sign the letter and then you send to me okay Walaupun you tertidur, tidak ada masalah eh. uh, Terlupa nak datang kelas So, pastikan you tulis surat You sign Your PAK also sign And then you send to me So, we can assume that one as an official letter Okay, if your PAK don't want to sign That means I, I, I don't trust you Okay If your PAK sign, then I trust you Okay, I should trust Because the PAK already signed Okay, uh, because there's also a case where the students uh, sleeps until 5 p.m. Then uh, the student wake up. Suddenly the class has already ended. Okay, uh, dia masuk kelas, dia lupa eh, kelas dah habis baru dia bangun. Okay, so that one is a special case ah. Uh. Okay. Okay, so so before that do you have any question to ask if you have question to ask please feel free to ask questions about uh, uh, about the lecture plan okay 
So if you see from here, uh, the lecture plan, uh, my plan is to, to start the face-to-face -face class on the week 11. Okay? Saya punya perancangan adalah untuk melaksanakan kuliah secara bersemuka uh, starting from week 11. So at least we can have four face-to-face -face lecture session. Okay? So I will ask you later about this uh, issue, okay, whether you are still here or not. Okay? Or if you're already here on the week 10, maybe we can start on week 10 until the end. So no problem. So I, I try to be uh, more flexible so that I'm not burden, um, give a burden to the students uh, to come to the campus to follow the face-to-face -face lecture like that. Okay? So I will ask you later, okay, I will ask you later whether you are ready or not. And then we can begin with the face-to-face -face classroom. Okay? So uh, maybe I will ask uh, about this. For, for now, we will do the full online. So, uh, whoever don't have the uh, how uh, uh, a place to stay until now, so you need to find a house, a rental house, uh, as soon as possible. Okay, sila cari rumah sewa segera dengan sesegera yang mungkin. So that uh, I hope by the first half of the semester you already get your uh, housing uh, rental house. Eh? Okay, you already rent a house with your friends okay kamu sudah ada tempat tinggal di sekitar campus you already in the parit raja okay so <coughs> okay so what else uh, maybe i want to explain uh, about yeah uh, students are you still there Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for the response. Eh? Okay, so maybe I want to, to explain uh, briefly uh, actually what you will learn in ECS. Apa sebenarnya yang you akan belajar dalam ECS eh, sebenarnya? So maybe we can start uh, a simple drawing eh, maybe. Wait, eh? So I will open a, a whiteboard. Eh? I will open a whiteboard so that uh, we can uh, I can explain to you uh, what you will learn in ECS okay so I open a jam board and I already share to all of you okay so this uh, jam board is already sent to your email and feel free to to, to help me to uh, you can also draw here right so okay so I will explain to you, okay, uh, about ECS. Remember that we have uh, five chapters, right? Kita ada lima chapters yang you akan belajar. So uh, what you will learn actually like this, eh? So in chapter one, chapter one is introduction to communication system. Okay, introduction to communication system. So uh, for example here, remember in communication system, we need to have uh, transmitter okay and then we need a medium or what we call as a channel okay channel or medium okay and we need another one is what we call as the receiver system okay so there are three things uh, in the communication system we need transmitter channel or medium and then the receiver okay so uh, how the uh, transmitter and receiver are communicate to each other is either through a wireless communications wireless medium or it can also be a uh, using a wired medium wired cable okay so sama ada channel itu atau medium itu uh, bentuk wireless or in term of cable. Cable can be any, eh? uh, it can be a, a twisted pair cable, coaxial cable, or for example, a copper wire, or what they call a, a optical fiber and so on. Okay, any wired medium. So, in chapter one, 
uh, introduction to communication system so actually what you will learn okay what you will learn is actually uh, uh, the basic concept of all these three things eh? transmitter channel medium and also the receiver so this is what we call as chapter one okay chapter one and then what in chapter two you will learn about the noise noise is um, a phenomena or what we call as a uh, electrical uh, it is part of the electrical pulses eh? uh, that disturbs the communication system okay it is something that disturbs uh, or degrades the performance of the transmitted signal okay so noise in chapter 2 you will learn the noise that uh, okay noise can be inside the system okay when we say that system is transmitter and receiver noise can be from internal system okay we're gonna have noise here okay noise boleh ada dalam system noise can happen in the channel or in the medium okay noise so we have internal noise and we have external noise okay so this is about chapter 2 okay so remember that noise will degrade the quality of the transmission system okay it will degrade the quality of your transmitted signal okay dia akan uh, mengganggu eh, signal yang dipancarkan daripada transmitter to the receiver okay and then what so you will learn about noise how to calculate the noise power uh, how to calculate the no uh, signal to noise ratio uh, and then what uh, noise factor noise figure and so on okay so that one is a uh, uh, chapter 2 okay chapter number 2 and then what after chapter 2 you will learn about the analog modulation uh, analog system analog modulation and demodulation system so in chapter 3 uh, ini kita masuk chapter 3 pula eh so chapter 3 so maybe i can use uh, what color cuma ada color ni je so chapter 3 okay okay chapter 3 uh, consists of um, you will learn all about the uh, analog system which is for uh, modulation and demodulation techniques okay so in chapter 3 first you will learn about the analog modulation process Analog modulation process uh, here happens in the transmitter. Okay, within the transmitter, uh, there's a block diagram what we call as the modulator. Okay, modulator. Okay, which do the process of modulation. Okay, modulation modulator ini berada dalam uh, transmitter. Okay. Yeah, it is not a single block diagram uh, it is not a single element like this eh? this is just a block diagram okay a modulator is a is a modul is a consists of a modulation circuit eh? which will do the modulation process what is the modulation process modulation process is the process of changing uh, the property of the carrier in accordance with the input signal okay so here needs uh, at least two input eh? So here we have a uh, input uh, signal ST and we're gonna have a carrier over here <coughs> uh, so biasanya kita gunakan uh, wait, eh? we have the message signal VMT uh, ni nanti kita akan lihat lah. <coughs> and we have the carrier signal over here okay and the output here is the uh, signal is a produce uh, is a signal produced uh, uh, from the modulation okay so here you will learn that by combining be, uh, both of these okay at least we're gonna need two inputs eh? modulation needs at least two input 
okay one is a signal another one is a carrier okay and for your information modulation can also have many inputs okay we have vmt1 vmt2 3 4 and so on and we can have one carrier no problem okay and we can also have many inputs and many carrier vct1 vct2 3 4 and so on uh, these are under the category of high level modulation techniques okay so for you uh, for you you only will learn one input message signal and one carrier only uh, simple okay so what you will learn here that uh, the output of the modulator is what we call as AM analog modulations another one is FM frequency modulation another one is PM uh, okay so okay so this is the the output of the modulation techniques okay for test one test one is until AM only eh? okay so part 1 of uh, chapter 3 is about AM, part 2 will be FM and PM. Okay, Amplitude modulation, frequency modulation and phase modulation. Uh, macam mana nak terbitkan, uh, we will learn later about this process. Okay, so and then after you learn about the modulation techniques, of course you will do the process, you will learn about the process of analog demodulation uh, okay uh, remember modulation is the process of combining two inputs at least two inputs to produce am fm or pm uh, okay so why do we need the modulation kenapa perlu ada modulation okay so we need to do the modulation process so that we can transmit the signal to the uh, channel or to the medium uh, okay so when we convert uh, from this input into the output so this is what uh, this the output uses radio frequency okay which is suitable for transmission in the medium uh, okay and now remember one of the reason that we do the modulation process is so that we can transmit the signal into the medium or channel so that we can transmit the signal across a uh, long distance okay for example uh, my voice okay for example when you do the when you call your friend actually eh? when you call your friend you speak uh, through the phone so your voice is actually this one eh? vmt and when you speak this uh, mobile phone will do the process of modulation okay it will convert your 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 input your voice into a radio wave okay into a radio wave so radio wave is an electromagnetic wave which is suitable for transmission into the medium across a long distance okay so apabila saya bercakap maka telefon ini akan melakukan proses modulation dan menukar kepada uh, input tadi input suara kepada uh, radio frequency signal which is an electromagnetic wave dan dipancarkan pada jarak yang jauh uh, so that's one of the reason we do the modulation process another thing is that why we do the modulation process so modulation process is the process of convert from low frequency into high frequency so modulation when we change to high frequency we can design a small antenna for the communication system uh, nanti you akan lihat where the higher the frequency the smaller would be the the size of the antenna system uh, you see that the antenna system here is very small inside the mobile phone okay because this is a uh, this is a using a 4g as lte systems where the frequency is a uh, higher than 900 megahertz so the 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 antenna size is going to be smaller so the higher the frequency the the smaller would be the size of antenna okay uh, remember when we do the modulation we are actually translating the the frequency from low frequency what we call as a baseband 
into a higher frequency what we call as a bandpass frequency or the radio frequency signal uh, okay so the reason the main reason is that so that the input or the message can be transmitted into the medium across a long distance uh, itu tujuan utama modulations okay and then what you will learn about a uh, demodulation process of course uh, after we transmit after the transmitter transmit to the receiver the receiver will receive the signal and need to do the reverse process uh, okay so in the receiver there are uh, what we call as a demodulator okay so demodulator inside the receiver okay demodulator is inside the receiver so this is what we call as a demodulator okay demodulator is a is part of receiver modulator is part of transmitter okay dia sebahagian daripada sistem itu so demodulator will do the process of demodulation so demodulation will do the reverse process okay that means you receive the radio frequency and you will produce the output of VMT again the original signal okay so you receive the signal from the transmitter and then what yeah so you you receive am fm or pm okay and you do the reverse process to get the original signal at the output uh, okay so this is in chapter 3 okay the first part of chapter 3 is am modulation and demodulation the second part of chapter 3 is about angle modulation which is fm and pm for both modulation and demodulation process uh, okay so perhatikan eh class uh, in chapter 3 okay in chapter 3 uh, you will learn about analog system what when we when we mention about analog that means the input is in term of analog we process as an analog and we transmit as an analog And we produce, we, we process the receiver as analog as well. And we produce the output as analog. What is analog? Okay. Analog is a continuous time signal. Okay. Analog is a, analog signal is a continuous time signal. Dia berkadar terus dengan masa. Uh, okay. So, analog system receive, process and produce the output of analog signal semuanya dalam bentuk analog everything is in term of analog uh, that one is chapter 3 ok and then what uh, so this is chapter 3 eh? so I put here chapter 3 ok and then what uh, after we finish chapter 3 we will learn about digital uh, ok uh, so in digital ok so I use different color lah sekejap eh? kalau kuning macam mana boleh nampak ke Uh, can someone respond? Can you see the yellow color? Is it clear or not? Clear that uh, Clear that okay, okay. So, I use a yellow color. Eh. Takut nanti kalau yellow, dia, si, dia tak jelas pula. Okay, okay. So, let's go to the chapter 4. So, tadi uh, chapter 3 is about uh, analog system. Eh. Remember that you will learn about uh, analog modulation. You will learn about analog demodulation. So, this is about amplitude modulation, frequency modulation and phase modulation okay then in chapter 4 chapter 4 we will learn about digital system ah, okay what is digital system so now when we mention about digital system that means the transmitter and the receiver will process or will produce the, the, the signal as a digital so every process will be done in term of digital uh, that one is a, what we call as a digital system because nowadays all si most of the system are digital ha, boleh katakan semua sistem yang ada sekarang adalah digital even your mobile phone is a digital uh, what is analog analog contohnya uh, radio system uh, kalau you ada radio if you have a radio that one 
that use the uh, that you want to listen to FM radio uh, contohnya uh, Suria FM, Era FM and and so on that one is the analog okay that one is a analog that mean that means it use the frequency modulation signal okay so what is the example of digital digital for example like digital tv uh, previously we have an analog television uh, remember that analog television the quality of the uh, channel is very bad okay uh, and then come with the digital tv the digital televisions where for example like astro uh, ataupun uh, for example hip tv uh, that one is a digital television okay so digital television uh, even digital television like uh, astro there's a problem uh, when there's a heavy rain that you cannot watch the the channel right uh, that one uh, we will learn about uh, that issue in chapter 4 why astro channel don't have a signal during a heavy rain why uh, so everyone blame the astro uh, actually there's a reason behind that uh, phenomena kenapa tidak ada signal ketika hujan lebat uh, semua orang marahkan astro eh? but actually there's a reason behind that uh, scenario that you will learn in chapter 4 okay so in chapter 4 uh, again we will do learn about uh, modulation and demodulation techniques but this time you will learn about uh, digital that means you see that <coughs> Uh, the transmitter system is in digital receiver system also in digital okay but the the beauty of a digital system is that we can have a flexibility to process the signal ah okay uh, the the good thing about a uh, digital system ini kita mempunyai flexibility untuk memproses signal secara analog ataupun digital ah so i will show you here in digital system eh? so now we are talking about digital system okay in digital system we can receive analog input we can receive digital input Apa? what is digital input digital input is a discrete time signal where it is in term of logic one zero one zero one zero uh, remember, one zero is not a number; it is a logic number. Okay, it is in the form of electrical pulses. Okay, so that means we have the flexibility of receiving input input signal either analog or digital. Then we process this input. Okay, kita process input itu as a digital. Okay. And then what? When we want to transmit the signal, we have the options. Either we want to transmit as an analog or digital. Oh, ini menarik eh. So that means, kita ada option whether we want to transmit the, the signal as an analog or we want to transmit as a digital. Uh, if we want to transmit as an analog, that means we need to convert the digital data into a electromagnetic wave so that we can transmit across the wireless medium of course eh, a wireless signal is analog okay signal yang uh, signal yang dalam bentuk wireless itu dalam bentuk gelombang eh, in the electromagnetic wave that one is uh, analog uh, that one is analog but that analog signal carries digital data uh, nampak eh Walaupun dia dalam bentuk gelombang electromagnet, of course, eh, uh, electromagnetic wave transmitted into the wireless medium, that one is a analog signal. But it carries digital data. Uh, berbeza, different from the chapter 3, where the analog signal carries the analog data. It's different. Uh, okay. So, you can transmit as an analog in the form of uh, electromagnetic wave Okay, or the radio wave across the channel and another thing is that you can also have the option to transmit as a digital uh, boleh juga kalau kita nak transmit secara digital but this one is through the wired medium uh, okay so if you want to transmit into a digital this one is in the form of electrical pulses okay electrical pulses 
okay so the data is uh, is converting is converted into electrical pulses so electrical pulses is in the form of voltage or current okay that means the logical data 1010 logical data is translated into a uh, electrical pulses uh, so that means there's a voltage here for example a 10 volt 0 volt 10 volt 0 volt and so on so that one is electrical pulses okay and then the signal arrive with the receiver so the receiver has the options uh, to produce output either analog or digital uh, so receiver ini this receiver will process the data as digital okay so this is uh, you receive a digital or analog and you have the flexibility to choose either you want to produce an analog output or you want to produce a digital output uh, so this is the beauty of digital system okay you have the flexibility to to uh, to receive and to produce the output in term of analog or digital uh, so uh, in chapter 4, you also will learn about modulation, modulation and demodulation. Uh, again, this one, eh, this picture. You will see another modulator and demodulator system. Okay. Uh, so, in the receiver, there's also demodulation system. Uh, and in the chapter 4, you will see that <coughs> uh, when we want to transmit as an analog, uh, that means in terms of radio frequency you will uh, this modulator will produce the output of ASK amplitude shift keying FSK frequency shift keying and also PSK phase shift keying okay other ASK FSK then you get PSK so <coughs> if I want to uh, to send the digital data as an uh, analog uh, in the form of radio frequency electromagnetic wave I need to do the modulation process uh, but this time uh, this time the VMT is in the form of digital data so I will do the modulation with analog carrier inside the modulator and I will produce ASK, FSK or PSK uh, where these three are similar ASK is similar to AM FSK is similar to FM PSK is similar to PM in the analog uh, dalam digital kita panggil we call it as a amplitude shifting, frequency shifting and phase shifting ok when I say similar it is not the same eh? ok the characteristic is similar <coughs> with the AM, FM and PM similar <coughs> similar but not the same ok, dia serupa tapi tidak sama ok, this, uh, this is the version of digital ok, so this is if I want to transmit in the form of uh, wireless analog or the radio frequency in term of uh, electromagnetic wave and if I want to transmit the data as a digital, that means I need to convert into a digital pulses. And I want to transmit inside the uh, cable. So here is also the modulation process where we, mod uh, we convert it into the uh, line using a line coding. Eh? So line coding is the process of encoding. So in ini, ini juga... Uh, when, you, when we see the coding process or enco uh, encoding process, this is also like a modulation technique but it is in the digital form. Or you see the uh, decoding. Uh, decoding is also similar with the demodulation process. So if I want to convert uh, into a digital pulses, eh, that means digital data convert into digital pulses so that I can transmit into the channel, I need to use a... a uh, coding system one of it is the line coding so line coding you will learn about uh, written to zero uh, non written to zero uh, Manchester coding uh, and various other coding system 
So we, we encode the digital data into electrical pulses. Now, why do we need to encode? Because we cannot assign a, a voltage or current for each of the uh, digits. Okay, there must be some sort of system that can convert the data, digital data, into electrical pulses so that I can transmit across the wired medium. Uh, this one, ASK, FSK, is for the wireless medium. Uh, so if I want to transmit into the wired medium, I need to convert into electrical pulses using line coding. Uh, and then move, uh, put inside the receiver. Receiver will do the decoding process or demodulation process to produce the output. Uh, okay. So this is chapter 4. So chapter 4 you learn about modulation and demodulation technique for the digital or you we can say that encoding and decoding process as well okay this one is chapter four uh, so in chapter three and also chapter four you will learn the process happen inside the transmitter and the process happens inside the receiver Okay, kamu akan belajar proses yang berlaku dalam transmitter dan juga proses yang berlaku dalam receiver. Okay, the process inside the transmitter is the modulation or the encoding process and also the receiver is demodulation or decoding process. Uh, so chapter 3, chapter 4, you learn all uh, the, the main process happens inside the transmitter and receiver. That's the chapter 3 and chapter 4. Uh, okay, and then what? The last chapter. Uh, okay, so the last chapter. So maybe I need to. Terlalu uh, So I move to the next part. Eh. Wait. Eh. The last chapter. Uh, so the last chapter, we we don't want to see uh, the process inside the uh, transmitter or receiver again. Uh, dalam chapter five. Uh, here. So now you see that uh, chapter 5, wait eh? Chapter 4, so this is channel. Okay. So, uh, so there's a wired medium and also the uh, wireless medium. Wired and wireless medium. Okay. So remember in chapter 3 and 4, you learn the process inside the transmitter and receiver. Kamu belajar semua uh, proses utama yang berlaku dalam transmitter dan juga proses utama yang berlaku dalam receiver. That's in chapter 3 and chapter 4. But when you move to the chapter 3, we don't want to see the process inside transmitter or receiver again. Instead, we will see different different thing. Okay, so in chapter three, chapter five, chapter five, you see that there are three topics: eh? transmission line, um, antenna, and wave propagation. There are three main topics in chapter five. The first topic is transmission line. So transmission line is about the channel. Okay, transmission line adalah berkaitan dengan channel ataupun medium either the medium is wired or the medium is wireless okay you will learn about the characteristic of the channel that's the first part of chapter 5 okay and then what the second part of chapter 5 you will learn about antenna system about this one Antenna is the thing that uh, convert the electrical energy in. Sorry, antenna is this is the thing that radiates the electrical uh, input signal into a electromagnetic waves. Okay, dia akan menukar uh, gelombang elektrik eh, yang disalurkan kepada antena kepada electromagnetic waves into the wireless channel. Okay. So, antenna, the characteristic of antenna is to radiate electromagnetic wave into the wireless channel. 
that's the characteristic of antenna the main characteristic of the antenna so you will learn some of the properties eh, of the antenna the main properties of the antenna because if you want to transmit wirelessly of course you need antenna you must have the antenna okay and then what the third topic eh, the last topic in chapter 5 is about wave propagation uh, so what is this wave propagation so i delete this eh? okay. so wave propagation what you will learn is about the wave characteristics this one okay the characteristic of the waves okay the characteristic of the ra uh, radio signal sifat sifat gelombang okay so from here you will understand uh, about uh, uh, many parameters uh, related to the uh, wireless uh, so related to the radio wave okay sifat sifat gelombang electromagnet you will learn in chapter 5 the uh, the third topic uh, okay so you see that in chapter 3 we are not looking inside the system anymore we are looking from the uh, outside perspective uh, okay in chapter 4 and chapter sorry in chapter 5 previously i, I said chapter 4 uh, in chapter 5 uh, as i said that why uh, astro television uh, don't have signal during a heavy rain uh, that one you you will learn in chapter 5 sorry not chapter 4 eh? uh, so kenapa astro tidak ada signal pada ketika hujan lebat uh, why uh, maybe i can tell you now uh, one of the reason is that because of the uh, frequency okay the frequency band remember astro is using the satellite uh, frequency which is a C band or KU band eh? okay and the frequency is larger than uh, 10 gigahertz okay so when the frequency is larger than 10 gigahertz what happened is that uh, the wavelength ataupun panjang gelombang will be reduced so if the wavelength is short that means the wave can travel at a shorter distance in one complete cycle okay so when the lambda is small it is more prone to the uh, absorption in the atmosphere dia signal itu signal yang mempunyai lambda yang kecil eh, that means the frequency is high so signal that has a low uh, small lambda it is more prone to the absorption in the atmosphere okay per, per, uh, absorption is a uh, penyerapan gelombang eh, oleh particle dalam uh, due to the particle inside the atmosphere so among the particles is what we call as the rain the raindrops the raindrop is a uh, uh, the raindrop the uh, the oxygen molecule and so on eh. so the 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 thing is about the rain especially for the heavy rain eh. so when the uh, signal from the <coughs> from the satellite to to your home okay to your home so if there's a heavy rain between uh, between this eh, if there's a heavy rain okay if there's a heavy rain so the rain will absorb the the wave energy okay the rain's particle will absorb the the signal energy and because of that when uh, because of that the signal will have a uh, attenuations will attenuate due to the absorption okay because of that there's so many absorption by the rain particles and most of the energy has been absorbed by the rain particles so the signal will attenuate ataupun melemah okay this process continues uh, from the satellite to the house and what happened is that the signal will not reach the house 
That's why you don't get the signal. Okay. Disebabkan oleh penyerapan gelombang uh, uh, penyerapan uh, tenaga eh, daripada gelombang tersebut apabila ia bergerak daripada satelit ke bumi so disebabkan oleh proses yang berulang-ulang eh, maka berlakunya perlemahan signal so signal yang lemah itu tidak sampai ke ke rumah iaitu uh, pemancar pada rumah so that's why you don't get the signal during the heavy rain okay that one is a story in uh, chapter 5 you will learn later about that Okay, so uh, okay, so and then in the final exam, you will see about uh, uh, about this picture, eh? transmitter, channel, receiver. Okay, and you're gonna see later that I will always draw this picture, eh? transmitter, channel, receiver. Okay, uh, so this you can say that this is my favorite picture. Uh, later, you're gonna you you will know. Why I always draw this picture? Kenapa saya selalu lukis gambar ini ya? Eh? Nanti kamu akan lihat. I always draw this picture, eh? transmitter, channel, receiver, uh, because uh, there's because this is the thing that we you will learn for the throughout the semester, and this gonna be also be asked in the final exam. Okay, uh, so later you're gonna see what happened. Okay, so uh, okay, ada soalan tak nak tanya? Do you have questions about uh, the overall uh, topics that you will learn in uh, ECS? Ada soalan nak tanya ke? So, I already explained the overall scenario, the overall topics that you will learn in ECS from chapter 1 until chapter 5. Okay? Okay, so um, so I need I think uh, I need to start with chapter one, eh? Okay. So let's start with chapter one. Okay. So if you see uh, chapter one, wait, eh? so chapter one, if you see I we I have a uh, two. So chapter 1 there's a two notes eh ada dua nota dekat chapter 1 eh? so there are two notes in the uh, chapter 1 sorry so the first one is uh, chapter 1 uh, this one eh chapter 1 pdf another one is chapter 1 dbm okay ada dua nota dalam folder eh so let's look at the this uh, we will learn about chapter 1 PDF first and then uh, chapter 1 DBM eh? how to calculate the power okay so hopefully you can be patient that because we need to learn uh, so many things eh? kalau saya tak mula nanti susah okay so uh, again eh, students um, this class is relax okay you need to relax in the class uh, don't be stressed okay if you have questions uh, feel free to interrupt my lecture ask questions okay I, I like students to ask questions no problem okay I will try my best to give you the best answer okay uh, and if you feel boring uh, sometimes we feel boring during the class session so um, you can uh, go anywhere uh, have a coffee or eat uh, lunch for example um, uh, you can uh, relax yourself eh, and then you can come back again to the class okay for me I will continue the lecture session until the end of time okay saya akan teruskan sampai habis okay uh, biasanya uh, saya tak ada rehat there's no uh, break in the middle because uh, this is online so you can break on your own eh? okay if you want to have a break you can have a break on your own no problem uh, and then please come back again and remember that uh, attendance will be given at the end of the class so make sure uh, if you want to go out make sure you are here uh, around uh, 
uh, 4.45, eh? make sure 4.45 you are here. Okay, 4.45 I will, uh, between 4.45 until 5, okay, antara masa lang masa itu, <coughs> I will take the attendance eh, using the uh, QR code. So later you can open your SMAP, uh, scan the QR code for your attendance. Eh? So, <coughs> so attendance will be given at the end of the class. Okay, make sure you, you are here uh, at least uh, 4.45. Okay, otherwise you tak dapat ambil attendance. Okay, there's, uh, there's uh, many times in the previous uh, semester that uh, students uh, follow the class but they are not around between 4.45 until 5 so they are not able to take the attendance okay okay so I will begin with chapter 1 eh? so relax eh? santai uh, so I will begin with chapter uh, chapter one, introduction to communication system. So before we proceed, uh, class, can you see my screen? Can you hear my voice? Can anybody respond? Yes, doctor. Okay, thank you for the response. Eh? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> chapter one, introduction to communication system. So, what are the topics covered in Chapter 1, Introduction to Communication System? So, this is the introduction about uh, uh, the, the basic introduction about transmitter, channel, receiver. Uh, so, you, you need to know what are the function of each of the elements of the components. Okay? And then, the terminology used in the, in the system for the transmitter, receiver system, the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the bandwidth, how to calculate the bandwidth. Uh, ni bandwidth adalah le jalur lebar. Eh? Uh, macam mana nak calculate the bandwidth. Uh, types of electronic communication. Uh, so, there are a few types of uh, electronic communications. Modulation techniques and multiplexing. This is in general. Because uh, this one, you will learn more details in chapter 3 and 4. And then, decibel and power calculation. Okay. So, uh, most of this is a theoretical concept and the last one is a calculation uh, calculation topic. Okay, uh, so uh, usually, okay, usually in the test and final, uh, this uh, will be asked many times eh, about decibel and power. Of course, it will come out in the test and uh, exam, final exam. Okay, how to calculate the uh, that, uh, the power in decibel and watt and conversion eh, between uh, dB, dBm and watt uh, ni kamu akan belajar nanti ok so introduction to communication system uh, communication uh, is a process of exchanging information from one point to another so one point to another is from transmitter to the receiver ok the main barrier is the language and distance Contemporary society emphasis now on the accumulation, packaging, exchange of information. <coughs> so the communication system should be efficient, reliable, and uh, secure. Okay, it requires transmitter, channel, or medium, and also the receiver. So there are three main parts: eh? transmitter, channel, or medium, and receiver. Okay. So, during the communication process, noise degrades the, or interferes with the trans, uh, transmitted information. Uh, so, noise you will learn in chapter 2 okay, is the electrical energy that uh, disturbs the transmitted signal. Okay, it will degrade the quality of the transmitted signal. So, this is a block diagram. Okay. So, we have the transmit the source. So, this is the source of the information put inside the transmitter transmitter transmit into the medium okay and then received by the receiver and then receiver pass to the destination uh, so source you can say that for example this is like a human being okay transmitter is like your mobile phone 
mobile phone transmit the signal into the medium receiver is also the mobile phone and then destination is the human okay there's a example and then uh, example b this is for the this is for the uh, request and uh, this is for the internet communication system eh, where it is involved a uh, request and uh, request data so this is actually a two-way okay so computer will request information from the server server will response eh? so request and response response with the desired data modem uh, this is the the thing that converts a, a signal into a uh, sorry convert the input into a suitable signal for transmission so modem is a short word for the modulation and demodulation so it, it can do the two process eh? modulation or demodulation and this is the network okay this the network the whole uh, the big network okay so this is for the uh, this is normally for the digital system okay data system so this is the block diagram of the transmitter and receiver so you see that the first one is transmitter so we have the signal source <coughs> so signal source will produce a message see message where you will put inside the transmitter so you can see that this is the transmitter part eh? this is the transmitter part okay so transmitter will convert the uh, the input signal source okay baseband converter into a baseband signal okay it will convert the input into a baseband baseband is the low frequency signal okay and then put inside the modulator okay subsystem synchronization so this is normally for the uh, digital system where we have the uh, synchronization process between transmitter and receiver so what are the things that need to be synchronized normally it needs uh, we need uh, both transmitter and receiver needs to synchronize in term of time the the receiver must know when the transmitter want to send the data so this is normally in the digital system okay in the analog we don't have this synchronization process okay so from the baseband we do the modulation process of course modulation process you will modulate with the analog carrier akan ada analog carrier remember at least we have two inputs in the modula uh, in the in the modulator after we do the modulation we will amplify the signal so that we can transmit in the long distance so the output here is the electromagnetic wave okay so which will be sent to the medium so send to the medium and then arrive at the receiver so during the uh, during the uh, the move from transmitter to the receiver the signal will go to uh, through a long distance so what happened is that uh, there going to be attenuations first due to the distance or maybe due to the uh, due to the <coughs> Uh, uh, crash with the obstacles ok, apabila gelombang itu bergerak daripada transmitter to the receiver ok, the, the, the signal will travel in a long distance number one, number two is that the signal will crash with the obstacles as well due to this uh, problem uh, they're gonna, uh, the signal will, will be attenuates Okay, the signal that travels from transmitter to the receiver will attenuate first due to the distance and due to the crash with the obstacles pelanggaran dengan obstacle antara transmitter and receiver okay so when when this happen the signal will attenuate attenuate means a perlemahan signal okay signal itu bergerak daripada transmitter kepada receiver dia akan melemah it will attenuate okay the 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 signal energy will uh, reduce or will attenuate once the signal move from transmitter to the receiver so that's why the signal when arrive at the receiver uh, the signal will be in low power or low energy so that's why in the receiver it will amplify the input okay amplify the input and then we do the 
demodulation process because the, the, the signal that we receive is very weak due to the distance and due to the crash with the obstacles so we need to do to amplify the signal and then we can do the demodulation process okay and then this is a uh, so previously you see a base band so this is a band pass eh? high frequency so band pass sorry after we we do the modulation uh, the term is what we call as a band pass uh, high frequency eh? okay high frequency okay high frequency uh, so high frequency of band pass signal is this is what a electromagnetic field electromagnetic wave or the radio wave okay we can also call it as a radio wave okay and then arrive at the receiver we do the amplification process and we do the demodulation process and we produce a baseband signal okay and then baseband processing and then we get the original output message okay again synchronization is normally in the uh, digital system normally we do the synchronization in term of time so the receiver and the transmitter must synchronize in term of time for transmit and receive data okay but in the analog normally we don't use the synchronization process okay so terminology uh, electronic communication system uh, transmission reception and processing of information between two or more location using electronic circuit information is the commodity produced by the source to transfer to some user at the destinations so message contain information okay message contain information okay uh, the physical manifestation of information produced by the information source so how can we transmit the message across the medium so we need to convert this message into signal Okay, so ini adalah data. So this is your data actually contain uh, information. So how can we transmit the message into the medium, either wireless or wired medium? How can we do that? Uh, so we need to convert the message into the signal, so that uh, this is the the thing that move into the medium. Ini adalah benda yang bergerak dalam medium. So you need to convert the message into a signals. So how to do that? Uh, this is when we want to convert into signal. Of course, we do the process of modulation. We produce the signals, and we transmit the signals across the medium. Okay. So types of signals. Uh, so this you need to know. So what's the difference between a uh, analog signal and digital signal? So apa beza dia? Uh, so analog signal is continuous over time dia adalah berkadar terus dengan masa macam mana berkadar terus uh, so you see that it is continuous all the time and it has an infinite shape okay dia tidak ada uh, bentuk yang tetap okay and here is digital signal so what's the difference so digital signal is discrete over time Dia tidak continuous seperti analog. Okay, so you see that it is consists of uh, uh, analog, sorry, uh, logic data, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and so on. Okay, and <coughs> you see that here the, uh, the digital signal has two possibilities only either logic 0 or logic 1 hanya ada dua kemungkinan saja dalam digital signal either it is a logic 0 or logic 1 uh, different from the analog it has an infinite shape for digital signal we only have two two kind of shapes eh? for shapes for logic 0 and shape for logic 1 hanya ada dua kemungkinan saja only two possibilities uh, you see that all Digital signal only have two possibilities, either zero or one. Uh, different from the analog, it, 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 there are infinite shapes. 
ada pelbagai kemungkinan there are too many possibilities uh, so you're going to see later that for the digital signal it is more easy for us to do the multiplexing to combine because all signal only have two possibilities logic zero logic one so therefore in digital signal or digital system easy for us to combine or multiplex many signals together uh, so if i want to send many signals together in a digital more easy compared to the analog uh, okay uh, transmitter what is transmitter a collection of one or more electronic device or circuit that converts the original source into signal that is more suitable for transmission uh, that is the job of transmitter so it will convert the input into a suitable signal for transmission uh, one of the process is to do the modulation of course there are many other process in the transmitter Okay, but in your syllabus, we will focus more on the modulation process. Of course, there are many, many other process in the transmitter. Okay, ada banyak process, eh, tetapi we will focus on this part, eh, modulation. Okay, other, pro uh, other functions, uh, amplification, filtering, uh, radiation, and so on. So, ada banyak. Eh. So, message will be converted into electrical signals by the transducers. Okay, receiver. Uh, is a collection of electronic devices and circuits that accepts the transmitted signal from the transmission medium and convert them into their original form. Uh, so, so this uh, among the process is the demodulation. There are other process as well like mixing and decoding. Uh, you're going to see later what is the difference between mixing and modulation. Uh, ada ada perbezaan eh? because modulation is also mixing uh, but what are the difference uh, you will see in chapter 3 okay. transducer converts the electrical signal at its input into a form of desired by the system use so this is inside the receiver modulation uh, modulation is a process of changing one or more properties of the analog carrier in proportion to the information signal. Uh, so how to do this? Uh, so you see that uh, as I mentioned earlier, modulator. Uh, yeah. So modulator is is part of transmitter. This sebahagian daripada transmitter. Okay. So modulator needs at least two input. One is a message. Another one is the carrier. Ah, okay. And you will produce the output. Okay. So modulation is the process of changing one or more properties of the carrier. Okay. So this is the carrier. So inside the modulator, the modulator will change uh, this modulation process will change the properties of the carrier in accordance with the input signal now so what are the properties there are three properties that you will learn the first one is amplitude okay so if the amplitude of the carrier change in accordance with the input message you will produce amplitude modulation signal at the output okay that's the first property the second property is the frequency uh, okay frequency of the carrier if the frequency of the carrier change in accordance with the input signal then you will produce frequency modulation output signal okay the third properties is phase fasa if the phase of the carrier change in accordance with the input variation you will produce at the output phase modulation signal pm 
Ha, nampak eh? So, modulation is actually a mixing process with at least two eh, message and also the carrier. At least you need to input to the modulator. Modulation is a process of mixing actually. But this mixing change the property of the carrier in accordance with the input. Ha, nampak eh? Proses ini melibatkan perubahan eh, sifat carrier. Uh, input tidak berubah the input doesn't change eh? the input doesn't change the properties ok only the carrier will change the properties ok and then what mixing uh, mixing is a com combination of two or more signals combine ok combine does not change this mixing does not change the property of either of the inputs uh, it just mix Later, you're going to see that mixing is the process of uh, multiplication in uh, mathematical process. Eh? Nanti kamu akan lihat. So, mixing, uh, different from the modulation, it just a mix of two or more signals. Uh, okay? And then what? Filtering. Uh, filtering is the process of removing unwanted components or features from the signal. Most often, we want to remove uh, some frequencies and uh, in order to suppress the interfering signals and reduce a background noise. <coughs> okay. Biasanya kita buat uh, filtering process. We want to remove the uh, the noise or the unwanted frequencies within the received signal. Uh, that's the process of filtering. Okay, So that you can get a better uh, quality of the signal. You want to remove all the unwanted frequencies. You just want to focus on a certain frequency only. That's a filtering process. Okay. Baseband converter to convert the signal source into a baseband waveform for the carrier signal before transmission. It can be analog or digital system. So the word baseband is a low frequency signal. What is a baseband? Baseband. So if you see here is a F. Eh? So it starts from zero until a few kilohertz, normally a low frequency signal. So this is what we call as a baseband, eh? frequency um, uh, frequency dasar, eh? they panggil a base, eh? frequency dasar uh, signal, ataupun frequency yang rendah. Okay, so this is, uh, you can say this is a power or voltage eh? versus frequency, it's a low frequency. Subsystem synchronization, synchronized connection between transmitter and receiver for the recovery process. As I mentioned earlier, synchronization normally we synchronize in terms of time so that the transmitter and receiver are ready to exchange data. Uh, otherwise, if they are not synchronized, uh, the data uh, cannot be recovered from the, uh, from the medium. Okay. Transmission medium provides means of transporting signal from transmitter to the receiver. Uh, medium can be uh, wired or wireless. Okay, wired we have a, a copper wire, for example, uh, signal as uh, signal as electrical current flow. Okay, this is a copper wire we transmit as a electrical using an electrical current flow. Uh, optical fiber. Uh, this is for the uh, photonic light wave. Eh? And then for the uh, use, and then for the wireless, we use the free space uh, using the electromagnetic waves. So transmission medium, there are two things: uh, wired or wireless. Okay. And this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Ah, okay. How does the electromagnetic waves looks like? Okay. So electromagnetic. Remember, we have uh, electrical and we have the magnetic field. Okay, we have electrical and magnetic field. So the word electromagnetic means we have two, eh? electro and also magnetic. Uh, so ada dua medan, there are two fields, eh? electric field and also the uh, magnetic fields. And you see that from this uh, animation, you see that uh, uh, electric uh, electrical wave, so, sorry, electrical field, we call it as a field, eh? the E field, is red color and the magnetic field uh, the blue color 
So both uh, electrical field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. Dia bersetentang antara satu sama lain pada satah yang berbeza. Kalau kamu nampak di sini, eh, if you see from here, both E field and B field or magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. And they move into a different directions. This one. Okay. So the oscillation, uh, the oscillation axis and the uh, propagation axis is perpendicular. Okay. Uh, satah, uh, uh, what they call uh, satah dia berayun eh? uh, The oscillation axis, okay, dia punya paksi ayunan adalah bersetentang dengan paksi pergerakan. Nah, this is what we call as a electromagnetic wave. So you see that E field oscillates uh, up and down, B field magnetic field uh, oscillates right and left, and they move into the um, they move together into the y-axis like this. Okay, so this is the characteristic of the electromagnetic wave. Okay, so the frequency range starts roughly around 200k until a few gigahertz. Okay, ah, this one frequency, frequency f. Ah, kita biasa nampak eh. We we normally see a f. What is f? F is the frequency, number of time a periodic motion occurs in a given period of time. Okay, dia adalah uh, kadar uh, ayunan, eh, kadar getaran eh, uh, sesaat. Okay, it is known as the hertz or cycle per second. Okay, period is the time for one repetition. For one complete cycle, how how much how many uh, how many seconds needs uh, for the signal to complete one cycle. This is what we call as a period of time, T. Okay, one cycle and then repeat another cycle, repeat another cycle. So the time for one cycle is what we call as a period of time. And time here is in term of second. Okay, and how to uh, relate with the frequency? Uh, so one complete cycle, T, or period of time T is equal to 1 over frequency. Okay, satu dibahagikan dengan frequency. Sebab frequency adalah satu per saat. Eh. Uh, second, eh. 1 over second. Eh. This is the frequency. Cycle. Cycle is one complete uh, alternation of waveform. Okay, satu kitaran lengkap adalah cycle. Uh, ada yang nak masuk? Ya, yeah. Is there someone else need uh, want to sorry are there someone yang nak masuk okay your friend eh? okay so I continue again <coughs> okay cycle is one complete alternation of waveform satu kitaran lengkap okay jumlah kitaran lengkap wavelength panjang gelombang lambda this is in term of meter okay so the distance traveled by electromagnetic wave during one period. Uh, in one period, okay, in one period, dalam masa tempo T, one period, how many, how long does the, the, the signal has traveled? Okay, dalam masa satu kitaran lengkap, berapa jauh gelombang itu telah bergerak dalam meter? In meter, okay. Wavelength defines the distance traveled by the electromagnetic wave in one period ha, Dalam satu period Berapa jauh gelombang itu telah pergi ha, Okay So lambda is C times T Or you can say that Lambda F is equal to C So this is the popular equations eh. Ini equation yang selalu kita nampak sebenarnya. So lambda F is equal to C C is the speed of light In free space Okay uh, approximately 10, 3 times 10 power of 8 meter per second Okay And we From here we can define that lambda is equal to C over F The speed of light divided with the frequency Okay, this is in term of meter Okay uh, This one So these are the uh, The frequency range eh? 
the frequency range uh, of uh, signal here is the designation frequency range and the, the related lambda for example this ELF is the extremely low frequency so the frequency is between 30 to 300 Hertz and the lambda is 10 power of 7 until 10 power of 6 very long jauh eh uh, 10 power of 7 10 kuasa 7 so panjang eh? bentuk uh, dia punya gelombang adalah sangat panjang ok so if you see from this equation uh, I go back ok so if you see from this equation the the lower sorry if the frequency is low that means uh, lambda will be higher longer if the frequency is uh, higher, lambda will be shorter. Uh, okay. And if I go to this uh, slide, uh, ELF is an extremely low frequency. So the frequency goes higher when we move from up to down. Okay. VF is a voice frequency. So you see that voice frequency 300 to 3 kilohertz. And the lambda is 10 power of 6 until 10 power of 5. Okay. And then very low frequency, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency, uh, uh, very high frequency. So you will learn a medium frequency in chapter 3 eh, for the AM, FM and PM. Okay. And also here in chapter 3. Okay. Very high frequency. So this is for AM, this is for FM and PM. Okay. UHF is the ultra high frequency, SHF super high frequency, EHF is extremely high frequency. So you see that the frequency goes higher when we go down. However, for the lambda, the higher the frequency, the lower, the smaller would be the lambda. Lagi besar nilai frekuensi lambda menjadi semakin kecil. That means the higher the frequency, uh, the signal will travel at shorter distance in one complete cycle. Uh, so we are talking one complete cycle, eh? Okay, it doesn't mean that the wave cannot travel long distance. Bukan se bukan bermakna gelombang itu tak boleh bergerak jauh, eh? Boleh. We are talking in one complete cycle, one period of time. Okay. And this is the um, the uh, the picture that shows uh, this is picture B eh, applications of the waves. Eh? So you see that uh, what are the applications? So you see that the frequency from uh, left to right, lower to higher frequency, and the wavelength becomes shorter as we move towards uh, the right side. Okay. So you see that for the low frequency, this is for the power and telephone system, okay, and then VLF, LF for using a twisted pair, and also the coaxial cable for the radio and uh, so radio frequencies eh, between low uh, between medium frequencies until uh, this one eh, this range, eh? okay. So this is a radio frequency. This is for the AM radio and also for the fm radio okay and when we move to uhf until ehf this is what we call as the uh, microwave uh, signal microwave eh? microwave uh, using in the radar microwave antenna or magnetrons and then we have a uh, infrared uh, so this is used in the lasers guided missiles uh, range finders and then uh, higher is a visible light so what is a visible light visible light means that the light that can be seen using uh, your eyes okay is a type of a uh, wave or light that can be seen okay so this is normally used in the optical fiber system okay so for you you will learn more about this eh? am radio fm radio and television this one eh? And also this you will learn in chapter 5, eh? Twisted Pair Cable and Coaxial Cable. You will learn in chapter 5. So this is the analogy of the uh, waves or 
uh, you can say this is also the application of the waves eh? uh, you see that uh, again from left to right the free uh, sorry So the frequency is uh, below a uh, frequency and wavelength. Eh? So this uh, you see that uh, as we move from uh, left to right, okay, the frequency becomes higher and the wavelength becomes smaller. The higher the frequency, the smaller would be the wavelength. Okay, and you see that uh, the sources of the frequencies here, you see <coughs> uh, AM radio. So these are the things that uh, produce the uh, the waves. Eh? These are the things that produce the wave. Uh, for example, AM radio stations, RF uh, cavity. This is a FM radio, microwave ovens, uh, radar, and so on. Eh? So from here, you see the, 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 uh, the size of the lambda. For for example, for the low frequency, it is the size of soccer field, and if you move to for uh, 10 power of one, uh, the uh, the size is a house, and then it becomes smaller baseball size, uh, this uh, period a uh, cell size, until the water molecule. So this is for the high frequency applications. <coughs> for example, like the X-ray or the radioactive elements so this is under the uh, x-rays or gamma rays eh? okay and even the uh, visible light is here eh? visible light okay visible light is for example like uh, using the light bulb or LED bulb eh? uh, so visible light used in the optical communication system uh, if you want to know that I think you already heard about the uh, li-fi the terms are li-fi eh? light uh, using the <coughs> uh, LED eh? so normally we use a Wi-Fi so now we have a live fi eh, using a LED light okay so that one uh, is uh, I think uh, currently already exists eh, the, the, the technology and maybe in the future will be more uh, commercialized eh? so live fi is uh, using a LED light it is based on the uh, uh, visible light system and eh, visible light communication system where the signal is transmitted using the LED light however in the live fi the the coverage is become smaller because we use a high frequency when you use a high frequency the coverage area will become smaller okay but uh, but the speed is very fast okay compared to live fi and Wi-Fi that we use currently Li-Fi has a very fast speed okay however only the coverage becomes smaller uh, so we need to optimize uh, that system within a short range that means we need a, a few Li-Fi routers eh, to connect many coverage areas okay so these are the explanation of uh, ELF, VF and so on so you can read on your own about this we already go through these uh, uh, explanations eh, about uh, all of the short form eh, for the waves okay. and the bandwidth ah, this one okay. okay the bandwidth uh, bandwidth in Malay is uh, uh, lebar jalur eh ataupun uh, uh, berapakah uh, lebar uh, satu band of frequencies how, how long is the distance between uh, the upper and lower frequency so bandwidth define uh, the difference between the highest frequency to the lowest frequency okay how long is the, the distance or the difference between the highest frequency to the lowest frequency uh, okay so with the bandwidth is a portion of electromagnetic spectrum occupied by the signal uh, so that means this band uh, this band for example the picture on the right so uh, inside here is contains the signal frequency okay 
So the frequency range over which a receiver or other electronic circuits operate, uh, the difference between upper and lower limit frequency limits of the signal or equip the operation range. Uh, so normally when we want to transmit signal, we need to know the bandwidth. Uh, how, much, how much is the bandwidth of the transmitted signal? That one must be clear. Okay, so that uh, the operation, the, op uh, the process of the uh, uh, the process of uh, signal to process the signal by both transmitter and receiver must be within the uh, design within the specified bandwidth okay so this bandwidth uh, is determined by uh, by the frequency range and it depends on the application type okay some application needs uh, some application only allows small portion of bandwidth some application allows larger bandwidth so it's also depending on the application type okay so when you want to design a, a communication system one of the most important parameter is about the bandwidth how much is the bandwidth requirement for the system uh, Apabila you menjadi uh, engineer yang design uh, system telecommunications, when you want to design the system, one of the important thing is how much is the required bandwidth. Okay, uh, especially for the cellular communication for the mobile phone. Okay, for the telcos, they are given small portion of bandwidth that needs to be shared with millions of users so they need to optimize that small portion uh, for all the users uh, so if you ask me in short bandwidth is actually money okay because uh, the government through the MCMC eh, uh, Malaysian Multimedia and Commission uh, uh, Commission they uh, when they want to open a uh, spectrum, eh, frequency spectrum, okay, sp frequency spectrum is this one, eh, inside the inside this range of frequencies. Eh. So here is what we call inside here is what we call as a spectrum, frequency spectrum. So when the government want to sell the frequency spectrum to the telcos, okay, for example for the five G uh, band. So the government will uh, uh, will advertise the uh, the bandwidth, and the telcos will bid uh, the the desired bandwidth for the five G applications, for example. Eh? So telco that uh, has a, the highest bidder will win that specified bandwidth, and normally the price is going to be millions. Okay. So telco telco ini dia bersaing untuk mendapatkan uh, frekuensi band yang mereka inginkan eh. dan ini prosesnya adalah dalam bentuk bidding. Okay, so government sell the frequencies. Okay, not only for the cellular, also for the radio frequency, also for the radio wave. Eh. Uh, so all the radio stations, so for example, like Surya FM, Hot FM, uh, Era FM, and so on, they also uh, apply for the frequency band that they want. Okay, they can buy sebenarnya bukan. It's not free. Eh. Okay, in order for them to operate at that specific frequency. Uh, okay, so bandwidth is a consists of frequency spectrum. Okay, it is the range of frequency from the highest to the lowest. So when we want to calculate the bandwidth, for example, like this. We need to minus uh, the highest to the lowest frequency. So, therefore, the bandwidth is F2 minus F1, which is 3000 minus 300. So, the bandwidth is 2700 hertz. Remember, the unit for bandwidth is in term of hertz. Okay. So, again, we have a channel bandwidth the range of frequency required to transmit the desired information uh, e.g. Uh, example audio signal 3 kilohertz uh, being modulated by a uh, 1000 kilohertz signal carrier using AM modulation so uh, <coughs> channel bandwidth uh, channel bandwidth remember where is channel uh, as I always draw previously remember we have transmitter 
we have channel we have receiver okay so channel bandwidth is the bandwidth for the medium or the channel uh, when we want to transmit the signal we need to know how much is the required bandwidth when you want to send from transmitter to the receiver uh, so bandwidth is uh, is uh, limited eh? the bandwidth is limited we cannot say that the bandwidth is unlimited okay we, because uh, when we want to transmit the signal we need to determine how much is the transmitted bandwidth that we need uh, so we cannot operate more than the specified bandwidth otherwise uh, otherwise uh, the receiver will be unable to uh, demodulate the received signal uh, okay transmission medium uh, so there are two types of transmission medium guided or unguided uh, guided means that the wave is guided from transmitter to the receiver it is guided in a specific uh, uh, in a specific way from the transmitter to the receiver so this is actually referring to the wired transmission guided that means the the wave is guided from one place to another so we use the uh, cable wired transmission and another one is the unguided dia tidak dibimbing unguided unguided is referring to the wireless medium wireless transmission why why it is says unguided because when the wave travel in a wireless medium it can move in multiple directions it is free to move in multiple directions dia tidak dibimbing okay it is unguided okay for example like terrestrial space wave free space and earth wave uh, okay characteristic and quality of the signal determined by the medium and the signal itself for guided the medium is more important for unguided the bandwidth produced by the antenna is more important so we're gonna see about this later key concerns are data rate and distance okay of course if the distance is longer the attenuation will becomes bigger kalau jarak ini semakin jauh eh, antara transmitter and receiver the signal will attenuate ataupun kita panggil melemah okay, the signal will uh, reduce in term of energy so characteristic of wireless propagations so we have uh, three types eh? signal travels along three routes we have ground wave sky wave and line of sight uh, okay so maybe i can begin with uh, this one line of sight so line of sight is uh, that means the transmitter and receiver antennas are facing one to another uh, so this is uh, you normally can see this inside the UTHM eh? so we have a transmitter okay so transmitter and receiver are facing to each other okay line of sight within the line of sight you can see the other side Okay, you can see the other side of the uh, receiver. So from transmitter, you can see the other side of the receiver. Uh, so it is between the line of sight. And there should be no obstacles between this distance. Okay, tidak boleh ada sebarang obstacle antara transmitter dan juga receiver. It must be a clear path from transmitter to the receiver. So this is normally using the FSO, free space optic. Okay, in UTHM we have uh, a few of these uh, pairs. Eh? Uh, so the system is what we call as the FSO, eh? free space optic. It is a wireless optic. Uh, okay. So this is uh, not only in UTHM, also in other places as well. So we use the FSO to connect the main campus and also the residential uh, place. For example, like the Perwira, for example. So we have a FSO transmitter and receiver that connects uh, the student's residential place to the main campus for the internet. Okay. So this is normally for uh, frequency above 30 megahertz. Okay. And not only for the 
internet it is also used for the cellular phone okay and then what <coughs> skywave skywave is for long distance uh, transmission okay so skywave okay so from transmitter the signal is transmitted uh, to the atmosphere okay to the atmosphere <coughs> the signal is transmitted to the atmosphere and it will be reflected back to the earth and received by the receiver okay so this is <coughs> normally use a low frequency signal so low frequency signal uh, low frequency signal the signal can travel in a longer distance so sky wave we we set we we shoot the signal towards the atmosphere and the atmosphere will reflect the signal back to the earth okay so this is for example like amateur radio uh, BBC World Service, uh, Voice of America, and so on. Okay, signal refracted from the atmosphere layer of upper atmosphere. <coughs> so it will go to the ionospheric layer. Okay, and reflected back to the uh, earth. Okay, and then what? Ground wave. Uh, so ground wave. Uh, this is normally for the uh, for the AM ra uh, AM radio and also for the cellular radio as well. Okay, so this is where we we have the uh, base station. Okay, we have the base station, and uh, this is the Earth surface. Eh? This is the Earth surface, and the wave travel like this eh, to the Earth. Okay move to the to the ground so for example here we have a human here this is a human so you can receive the signal eh, from the base station so this is the base station so the wave travels from the base station to the to the earth surface eh, to the ground okay so it follows the earth contour of course eh, if the contour is like this uh, so you will get the signal okay so base station you can see uh, normally base station in the upper level area normally uh, biasanya di atas kawasan uh, tinggi eh berbukit eh ini biasa nampak you can see here uh, uh, the base station normally put uh, in the higher level area or in the upper hill for example so that we uh, the signal can be uh, spread across a wide area within the earth surface Okay, uh, so this is the difference. So uh, if you ask me, this is also uh, this have been asked in the uh, in the final exam, where the students have been asked to draw the the the, the types of uh, signal, eh? how the signal travels, eh? ground wave, sky wave, and line of sight. Pernah ditanya dalam final exam berkenaan dengan these three things, eh? the difference between this. So students need to draw and show the difference. Okay, pernah ditanya. Okay, so uh, class, if you uh, have questions, uh, feel free to ask me questions. Okay, anytime you are most welcome to ask question. Okay, so if you don't have question, I will keep on uh, moving to the next slide. Okay, feel free to ask question. Ah, transmission impairment. This is also the favorite questions. Okay, if you see in the test and final exam, we have asked these questions many, many, many times. Okay, about the transmission impairments. Transmission impairments is any undesired effect on the signal while traveling from the transmitter to the receiver, such as noise attenuations interference and other losses caused by the atmosphere or the medium itself so you see that there are three things noise attenuation and interference so these are the noise uh, sorry these are the transmission impairments okay so what happened uh, if transmission impairments happens uh, so for the analog system transmission impairments will degrade the quality of the signal 
in digital signal it will uh, cause a bit error okay so here degrade the quality uh, it can be in term of uh, uh, noise level sorry in term of a uh, signal level signal level will becomes lower okay and it will have a uh, noise inside the uh, transmitted signal bit error what is bit error bit error means that if for example the transmitter uh, this is for the digital eh? for for example if the transmitters uh, transmit 101010 for example and suddenly the receiver decoded as 111010 for example okay apabila transmitter transmit uh, bit ini tetapi receiver decode sebagai ini so you see if you see the difference uh, so this is a, what we call as a bit error it's supposed to be zero but suddenly it becomes a logic one so this is type this is what we call as a bit error okay transmitter uh, hantar signal 101010 suddenly receiver interpret this as different bit so this is what we call as a bit error so transmission impairments uh, caused by three things attenuation noise and interference uh, okay ada tiga there are three things eh? uh, so these are the things that come out in the test and final exam in the free previous final exam and test uh, ini pernah ditanya berkali-kali banyak kali okay so student need to explain uh, what are the transmission impairments so you need to explain uh, the first one is a noise uh, attenuation and interference uh, so what is the noise noise is the random undesired electrical energy that enters the communication system via the circuits devices or communication media and interferes with the transmitted message so what i have explained earlier in my uh, uh, in the google jam board uh, uh, noise can happen inside the system it can also happen inside the medium or channel and it will uh, interferes with the transmitted message it will degrade the quality of your signal uh, okay so noise is a part of electrical energy that disturbs the transmitted signal uh, okay <coughs> and then what attenuation the second impairment is the attenuation attenuation in malay is a perlemahan signal Okay, it is a drop in signal power due to the distance travel by the signal. So when the signal travels in a longer distance, the attenuation will become higher. Okay, attenuation normally we 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 calculate in term of decibel. Okay, so the longer the distance, the higher would be the attenuation. Okay, and then the third impairment is the interference. So interference is also a noise but it is a noise that has the same frequency as your transmitted signal. Uh, okay? For example, if I I transmit signal at 100 megahertz, for example, and suddenly you also transmit signal at 100 megahertz. So my signal and your signal will interfere to each other. So your signal is the interference to my signal because both have the same frequency. Uh, okay. So what happened if interference happened? <laughs> okay. So if interference happened, that means there are two or more signal which has the same frequency. Okay. And when it arrive at the receiver, the receiver will be unable to demodulate or to differentiate between two different uh, or two different uh, or more signals because the signal has been mixed up okay receiver tidak mampu untuk membezakan antara dua atau lebih signal yang bergabung eh yang mempunyai frekuensi yang sama at the end you will get a, a, a error in the output of the receiver receiver will be unable to interpret the signal because both uh, because the signal which has the same frequency are already mixed up okay 
So the receiver unable to uh, to differentiate or to decode or to demodulate the signals because it has been mixed up. Uh, so this interference needs to be uh, reduced. Uh, need to be uh, uh, eliminate from the uh, from the medium so that it does not happen in the uh, between transmitter to the receiver. Okay. Uh, bit error rate. Uh, this I already explained. This is the bit error. That means the transmitter send different bit, and then the is uh, the transmitter send a few bits, and the receiver suddenly interpret this as a different bit. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, bit rate, for example, one zero one zero. And suddenly the receiver interpret this as one 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 zero. So this is example of bit error. Okay, uh, so bit error happens due to the transmission uh, transmission impairments like we have uh, seen in the previous slides. Okay, so another significant uh, this bit error is another significant measure of system performance in terms of noise is bit error. Uh, so. Uh, bit error is also a measure of performance. Another one is the SNR. Selain daripada signal to noise ratio, uh, bit error is also one of the performance uh, metric uh, to 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 analyze the performance of the transmission uh, signal. Okay, it specifies the number of bits that are corrupted or destroyed as the as the data are transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver. For example, a bit error rate of 10 power of minus 6 indicate that one bit out of 1 million bit, 1 million is this one, eh, 6, eh, is corrupted in the transmission. So, biasanya, uh, normally when we uh, write the bit error rate parameter, we write the bit error rate in term of uh, 10 power of minus x. Okay, 10 power of minus x. Okay, so... How many bits are corrupted uh, for the 10 power of x bits that has been transmitted? So, for example, here is uh, 10 power of 6. That means uh, 10 power of 6. That means this is uh, one bit out of one million bit transmitted from transmitter to the receiver are are corrupted. Uh, satu daripada satu juta bit yang dihantar akan corrupted. Okay. For example, another example, 10 power of minus 3. Uh, so, this is 1 bit out of 1,000 bits are corrupted uh, when the transmitter send the data. Uh, so, if you see from here, okay, this one is worse compared to this one. Kerana, why? Because uh, out of 1,000, 1 bit will be corrupted. This is 1 bit out of 1 million. Satu daripada sejuta dengan satu daripada seribu. Okay, of course, this one is better compared to this one. Okay, and if you see that uh, uh, the way we write uh, the bit error rate is, for example, here 10 power of uh, minus uh, 10 power of minus 12, 10 power of minus 10, uh, 10 power of minus 6, and so on. Eh? So, you see that the, the higher the magnitudes, okay, the higher the magnitude, the better would be the system okay lagi tinggi dia punya magnitude ini maknanya uh, dia punya jumlah bit error itu semakin kecil okay the higher the magnitudes that means uh, the number of bit that will be corrupted or destroyed will be smaller which is good so ideally we want to 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 have a, a smaller bit error rate okay smaller bit error rate or what i say here is that the higher magnitude of the uh, this power uh, calculations eh? so if uh, for example 10 power of uh, 16 minus 16 uh, this one is much better okay so ideally we want the bit error rate to be as small as possible okay lagi kecil nilai bit error rate lagi bagus the better would be okay if the number of, if the bit error rate is smaller that means uh, the, uh, the the performance is better. Okay, bit error rates uh, becomes smaller if the magnitudes here becomes higher. Kalau magnitude ini semakin besar, 
maka bit error rate ini adalah kecil. Okey, menjadi lebih baik. Okey. So several factor that contributes uh, to the bit error rate. Uh, so what are the factor that uh, affect the bit error rate? So we can see that uh, we have a bandwidth, transmission speed. Uh, so bandwidth is in term of hertz, transmission speed is in term of uh, this transmission speed is depending uh, is what we call as a bit error rate. This is a bit per second. Okay. Transmission medium, the type of medium environment depending on the environment the distance the longer the distance that the higher would be the bit rate uh, sorry the higher would be the bit error rate and then the transmitter and receiver performance uh, so if the transmitter and receiver is uh, has a bad performance uh, the bit error rate would be higher okay and then what uh, so you see that there are many many topics here that you need to understand okay <laughs> Uh, so types of electronic communication so you can see that it can be classified into uh, three ways so the type of uh, electronic communication system can be classified into three categories so in a system and eh, so we are talking about the the whole system <coughs> so uh, types of electronic communication so when we mention about electronic communication that means the type of electronic communication that means so <coughs> this one eh? electronic communication consists of transmitter medium or channel and also the receiver okay so there are a few uh, a few way to classify the electronic communication system uh, so this is the system transmitter channel then and also the receiver so how to classify the transmission uh, so how to classify the communication system there are three ways the first one is according to the transmission mode second one is according to the type analog or digital uh, analog chapter 3 digital chapter 4 okay and then the third one is baseband or broadband so is this a baseband or broadband so ada tiga kaedah untuk uh, classified uh, untuk untuk mengelaskan eh uh, untuk mengelapasi jenis transmission system tersebut okay so let's look uh, the first one transmission mode so we can classify the communication system in term of, in term of transmission mode uh, apa dia uh, so this is the favorite question for the test and final exam we uh, remember eh class uh, we, this is the favorite question Okay, we have asked this many, many, many times. Okay, so transmission mode there are uh, two types, uh, two main types. The first one is a simplex, so signal travels in one direction only. Uh, signal itu bergerak dalam satu arah saja. Either it is a receive only or transmitted only. So simplex is normally used for the uh, broadcasting system. Uh, for example, television. Uh, television is a simplex because you only receive the signal, the TV station. Uh, you are not communicating with the TV station eh, because this is a broadcast. Another thing is the uh, radio system. For example, you want to listen to uh, uh, Hot FM, uh, Surya FM, Era FM and so on. That one is a radio broadcasting. Uh, radio broadcasting, you only listen to the radio. Okay, You are not communicating to the other side. Okay, so that one is a simplex. Another one is a two-way or duplex. Uh, two-way means that both party can communicate to each other. So duplex can be categorized into two. The first one is a half duplex. So half duplex, of course, it is a both directions communication, but only one person or one entity can be can uh, communicate, can transmit at a at a time. Hanya satu pihak saja boleh transmit signal pada satu-satu masa. Uh, so, for example, this is used for the walkie-talkie system, half duplex. Uh, in walkie-talkie system, for example, in the police radio, eh, so uh, one person uh, talk, another one listen. When the other person talk, uh, this person will be listen. So, they are exchanging information one at a time. Okay. 
and then we have a full duplex uh, full duplex both that uh, both parties can communicate to each other in the same time uh, for example your telephone uh, telephone here is a full duplex that means I can speak you can speak at the same time so we can talk at the same time so this is a full duplex okay uh, so this is a transmission mode so we can also classify the communication system uh, in terms of analog or digital system uh, so kita boleh classkan uh, communication system itu sama ada dia adalah analog ataupun digital okay analog system energy is transmitted and received in analog form so both information and carrier are in term of analog uh, as i mentioned earlier analog so analog system you have an analog input you transmit as analog okay you receive analog and you produce output at the res uh, out receiver output as a analog so everything is in analog okay digital system ah. so digital trans system uh, here you see that it it is divided into two categories okay the first one is a digital transmission ah. so here so the first part here digital transmission uh, is referring to the uh, digital system that transmit as a wired system Okay, yang bahagian pertama ini menerangkan tentang digital system where it uses electrical pulses. Okay, and to transfer the data between one point to another. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, the transmitter will do the will use a line coding. Okay, to change the digital data into electrical pulses or digital pulses okay there is no analog carrier involved in the uh, transmitter to produce the electrical pulses okay dalam case ini dia tidak melibatkan analog carrier no analog carrier original source uh, info may be digital or analog of course we have the flexibility we can have a uh, analog input and we can have a digital input uh, but we want to transmit as a digital in term of electrical pulses okay so if analog signal it will be convert into digital pulses prior to transmission of course and converted back to analog signal at the receiver so that means if you have analog so the receiver will can will also produce a analog output but you transmit as a digital as a electrical pulses so it require physical medium between transmitter and receiver physical medium is a wired transmission okay so you see that here uh, does not need a, a carrier for the modulation dia tidak melibatkan analog carrier uh, so now see here the second part okay in digital system the first one digital transmission using a wired so this is using the electrical pulses Another one is a digital radio. Uh, so this is uh, what we meant. This is for the digital system that transmit as a wireless. Okay. So this is the channel, and this is the receiver. Okay. So, <coughs> so we have the input. Of course, we have a uh, flexibility either uh, analog or digital input, and we want to transmit as a wireless. And we can produce either analog or uh, digital. Okay, so here the transmission of digital modulated carrier between the two or more points. So you see that the, there is an analog carrier. Bermakna, that means in the transmitter there gonna be carrier. 
what's the purpose of this carrier? Uh, so the carrier will will modulate with the input signal to produce the electromagnetic wave uh, because we want to transmit as a wireless in the form of electromagnetic wave so when we have the analog carrier over here that means we will transmit the signal either as a PSK FSK or PSK okay so uh, modulating signal uh, modulating signal here means referring to the input okay and demodulated signal is the the output are uh, uh, digital pulses uh, so if you see from here digital pulses <coughs> so uh, <coughs> okay so digital pulses uh, modulating signal and demodulating signal so <coughs> we are uh, processing the signal in terms of digital okay when we do the process inside the system we do the process in terms of digital pulses but when we produce the signal we can have the options either to convert it into digital output or analog output similar with the input input can have an analog and also input can have the digital uh, so this is the flexibility of the digital system but remember for the digital radio we have the analog carrier we transmit as a analog uh, that's a digital radio so the word radio here means that we are transmitting the signal in a radio wave using a radio wave a radio wave is an electromagnetic wave the frequency is between kilohertz until a few gigahertz that's a radio wave <coughs> okay so the digital pulses could originate from digital transmission system from digital source computer or binary encoded uh, analog signal transmission medium may be physical facility of free space uh, okay and then what advantage of a digital transmission uh, uh, in terms of uh, this is the advantage in the digital technology we can use a low cost uh, VLSI technology data integrity uh, so this is among the advantage um, advantage of when we use a digital transmission okay uh, capacity utilization data integrity a uh, uh, longer distance over low quality of lines uh, capacity utilization so we can support uh, uh, many users security and privacy we can secure the trust uh, we can secure the data integrations we can treat analog and digital data similarly uh, so this is the the good the, the beauty of the uh, digital system where we can uh, treat both uh, analog and uh, digital signal uh, input signal together similarly eh? we have the flexibility to convert uh, analog digital digital analog okay and then what uh, baseband transmission ah, okay this is the third uh, this is the third way how we can classify the uh, communication system uh, so baseband transmission is the low frequency transmission uh, okay so you say that putting the original signal directly into the medium without doing the modulation with the uh, with the analog carrier okay this baseband transmission does not require uh, analog carrier to do the modulation process okay remember baseband transmission tidak melibat this not uh, does not require uh, analog carrier for the modulation process uh, okay and then what baseband uh, so you see that here uh, digital signal are used but it can also be used with analog technology so it can be both analog or digital frequency division multiplexing is not possible baseband and bi-directional transmission short distance signal traveling so normally baseband okay last normally baseband is used for the wired transmission normally 
pada kebiasaannya uh, baseband transmission uh, is used with the uh, wired transmission we use a low frequency transmission so entire bandwidth of the cable is consumed by the signal in a baseband transmission example is a ethernet so this is a baseband so remember baseband is a base frequency ataupun frekuensi dasar frekuensi yang rendah okey dia tidak melibatkan modulation dengan analog carrier does not need the analog carrier to to produce the output signal and the last one is the broadband transmission uh, broadband transmission uh, the original input signal used to modulate with the analog carrier that means in the transmitter we're gonna have the uh, analog carrier okay okay BMT here is a message modulate with the analog carrier and we want to produce a radio signal which is a broadband transmission broadband here means a bigger bandwidth okay the bandwidth is higher okay so when you uh, modulate with the analog carrier you will uh, produce a radio wave frequency radio wave frequency has a higher bandwidth bandwidth yeah besar okay so for broadband analog signals are used transmission of data is unidirectionals one way signal traveling uh, distance is long so you can send in a longer distance Frequency division multiplexing is possible. So that means we can have many inputs and one carrier and we transmit together. Okay, so it can be, it, it is possible. Why possible? Because the bandwidth is bigger. So we can support many inputs. Okay. The signal are sent on multiple frequencies and allow all multiple signal are sent simultaneously in broadband transmission. So example here, uh, DSL, cable television networks. Uh, so this is the example. So broadband, uh, actually most of the time we use in the uh, wireless communication. But it can also be used in the wired transmission depending on the type of cable that we used. Okay. But normally this is for the wireless. Eh? Normally digunakan dalam wireless system. But it is also can also be used for the uh, line cable, depending on the type of cable that we used to connect transmitter and receiver. Okay. So I will uh, uh, this one I will explain. Uh, should I explain? Okay, maybe I will explain this uh, next week. So now it's uh, six uh, four forty. So I will explain this uh, next week. So we stop here. So we can take the attendance. Okay. So you can open your QR code. So you can open your QR code. Uh, we can take the attendance. So after you take the attendance, you can uh, go out from the Google Meet, no problem. Okay. So semua boleh open uh, QR code. Eh. You can open the QR code. Uh, scan the attendance. I will give the QR code here. Wait. Eh. Section 1. Okay, so you can scan your uh, your attendance. So after scan your uh, attendance, you can uh, go out from the Google Meet and go to another place. No problem. See you again next week. Okay. Thank you, Data. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Data. Thank you, Data. Thank you, Data. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Uh, 
Masa Ya Doktor uh, Saya baru tukar section daripada section 2 to section 1 Saya tak dapat nak scan Attendance Okey, uh, nama siapa? Uh, Nuliana Syafika Ya, ya, ya Uh, siapa nama tadi? Uh, saya Nuliana Syafika binti Abdul Syukur Uh, metric number? Uh, DE190047 Sorry, uh, DE? 1919004047 Okay, Nur Liana Syafika bersyukur nanti saya take note Ah, ya yeah. Ah, ya yeah. Okay, no problem Nanti saya akan take note, no problem uh, Okay, uh, tapi dengan uh, author sekali, doktor uh, kena Okay, tukar. okay, nanti saya update dalam author okay. Sebab ini, uh, okay. ini tadi uh, data daripada Pagi tadi saya tengok sama Okey tak apa Nanti saya akan update dalam author dan dalam uh, attendance Okey Okey thank you sir Okey welcome So who else? Doctor, Siapa lagi? Uh, yeah me me I couldn't take the attendance Because my phone is off and I am in my laptop Okey so what's your name? Abdul Razak Abdul Razak Okey the first yeah. one Okey I will take yeah. attendance Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Who else? Siapa okay. lagi belum ambil attendance? Doctor. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Doctor, attendance saya dah dah, dah ni ke? Siapa nama? Ya, yeah, Irfan Hadi. Irfan? Ah, Irfan yes, Hadi dah. Irfan Hadi dah. Alright. Alright. Okay. Who else? Semua dah? So if okay, so I will close this one. So two students are absent. Semudah. So I will stop sharing.